please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. So it's a mixed opening as far as Wall Street is concerned, uh, but uh, quite volatile there. So we will get you the updates on how uh, Wall Street moves. But for now, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on What's Hot. I'm Kritika Saxena. Here are the top five stories that we are tracking here in India. Markets bounce back, ending a seven-day losing streak on the last day. Sensex gains 300 points. Nifty reclaims 10,500. Mid-caps outperform. Finance Minister defends the budget math, says government is committed to fiscal prudence and asserts that stock markets did not fall because of the long-term capital gains tax. This after former Finance Minister Peter Dumbaram questions the fiscal and tax numbers in the budget. Congress is trying to manufacture allegations, says Finance Minister Jaitley, on the controversy over Rafael fighter jets deal. Congress response says reveal the overall cost of the aircraft and not the specifics. United States hands India a slightly better rank in the intellectual property index, but India is still 44th among 50 nations and the worst performer among most emerging market peers. Violent protests in the Bangladesh after a judge convicts opposition leader Khalid Azia of corruption sentences her to five years in jail. Well, those are the top five headlines of the day. But first, let's get you the top story this evening. The Lal Street finally managed to end the day in the green, snapping a seven-day losing streak, its longest in four months' time. The comeback can be attributed, in a way, to the broad-based gains seen across major indices. So, be it the Nifty, for instance, the Sensex, the Midcaps, or the Nifty Bank, all managed to end in the green. Talking about the Midcap Index, it was clearly the outperformer amongst most of the crucial indices, ending with gains of almost 350 points. Let's bring in Anuj Singhal as always to decode this for us. Anuj, the bull's finally making a comeback but how sustainable is this? Well, good day for the markets. Uh, a big bounce back. Broad-based buying is what we saw. Though the markets failed to close at the highest point of the day but that's okay because you know you may not want to take an overnight risk with the way uh, US markets are shaping up off late. Uh, the big story today was earnings and even though we are at the back end of the earnings, today a lot of earnings really surprised the markets on the positive side. So that really is the one which stands out. Uh, uh, it was led by Cipla. In fact, Cipla led the big pharma rally today. Uh, after the, that positive commentary from the management, we had the, the company's CEO also on the channel and uh, Sun Pharma, Dr. Reddy's, all these stocks also rallied in trade. Uh, other nifty gainers included names like Ambuja Cement, SBI and Infosys. But it was, as I said, about earnings. So, ACC, stunning numbers. Bharat Forge, spectacular numbers. Page Industries, uh, remarkable numbers once again. Heidelberg Cement, poster numbers was up 8%. Muthut Finance, very strong set of numbers. Balram Puccini was a disappointment in numbers, but they made up for that with that buyback announcement. So, that stock also rallied. And some big FNO gainers today, names like uh, Sun TV, Reliance Capital, IDBI Bank, and Jindal Steel and Power. So, all in all, uh, the market is now at uh, a crucial level. 10,550 to 600 is where last time it took support as well. So this zone is important. And of course, uh, what happens to US market, that remains the decisive factor. Okay, fair enough. So earnings leading that rally. We'll have to uh, wait and watch to see if bulls actually are able to sustain this. But in the commodity space, oil prices have fallen to its lowest price in one month after data showed that US crude output has reached record highs. Brent is trading at $65 a barrel, while Narmex is right now at the $61.9 per barrel mark. But let's get to the other big story that we have been tracking all evening, in fact. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley defended India's growth story and his budget math in Parliament today. Jaitley reiterated that the India's GDP growth has been the highest in the world in the last three years and that even organisations like the IMF and the World Bank have recognised this as a fact. In a speech that lasted nearly an hour, Jaitley also countered his predecessor, P. Chidambaram's charge that the budget math would result in a higher fiscal deficit. Jaitley said that the Modi government has stuck to fiscal prudence for four years and assured that they will continue to do so, responding to Chidambaram's question earlier in the day. Jaitley confessed that they were conscious of the challenges over job creation and the agriculture. However, he also added that Congress must introspect on their contribution in elevating these challenges when they were in power. Take a look at those war of words. You claim that India's economy has grown by 6%, 6.5%, 7%, the world's fastest growing economy. Thank God you have not claimed we are growing at 100%. Yeah. In 2014-15,
7.4 percent GDP growth was the highest in the world. 15, 16, 8.2 percent GDP growth was the fastest growing in the world. In 16, 17, 17, 7.1 percent was the highest in the world. Every deficit target has been breached for the budget. Fiscal deficit has been breached. Revenue deficit has been breached. Effective revenue deficit has been breached. Primary deficit has been breached. Will the impact of these deficits be inflationary? This year, our try was to take the fiscal deficit 3.2. But this year, a challenge was faced. और एक स्पष्ट चुनौती ये थी कि जो हर महीने का जीएसटी होता है वो अगले महीने के अंदर मिलता है और इसलिए एक महीने का राजस्व जीएसटी का कम था और उस एक महीने की वजह से एक आंकड़ों का गणित का एक प्रभाव था जो पड़ा इट्स ए स्टेटिस्टिकल डिफरेंस लेकिन फिर भी जिसको फिजिकल प्रूडेंस वित्तीय अनुशासन कहते हैं हमारी सरकार ने पिछले चार वर्षों में उस वित्तीय अनुशासन का पूर्ण रूप से पालन किया है और आने वाले वर्षों में हम करने वाले दिस इज योर रिकॉर्ड नो जॉब्स फार्मर्स इन डिस्ट्रेस नो जॉब्स फार्मर्स इन डिस्ट्रेस एजुकेशन आउटकम्स आर पेथेटिक हेल्थ आउटकम्स आर पेथेटिक वी आर ऑल्सो कॉन्शियस ऑफ द फैक्ट बॉयली साहब दैट वेदर इट इज agriculture or it is poverty alleviation or it is uh, creating more employment these are challenges and these challenges have not arisen only in the last four years there has been historical backwardness there has been lack of policies in the past and therefore You've been in power for 55 years. Just introspect as to how much you contributed in either removing these problems or creating these problems. Okay, so that was one aspect, the fight on the budget math, but the other one, and the other big one, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley also hit back at the Congress over allegations of corruption in the Rafale deal. Jaitley accused the Congress of trying to manufacture allegations. He also went on to say that giving the cost breakup for a defense deal will expose the components of the aircraft to the enemy. Shashi Tharoor then responded to the Finance Minister and said that the Congress was only asking for the overall cost of the deal and not the breakup. Here's the exchange from Lok Sabha. When you give the specific details, you are giving details of the weapon systems that you possess and the capacity of those weapon systems, which you don't want to inform the enemy. Now, now questions are asked. I have a question 14-12-2005. Give the details of the fighting weapon system bought from the Americans and the details and the cost. And Mr. Pranam Mukherjee replies, details of government expenses on purchase of arms and weapon systems are classified in the nature and it would not be in national interest to divulge them on the floor of the house. Yes. So please ask your, ask your Kapati president who has raised this issue to kindly go back to Mr. Pranab Mukherjee and take certain lessons from him. Yes. Or national security. The question is again asked, is the government purchasing a long-range missile from the Israels, from Israel? Mr. A.K. Anthony on 22-8-2007 says, divulging details in this regard to this house would not be in the interest of national security. And I have not one, I have 15 answers given during the UPA where details of armament purchase item wise cannot be given for the simple reason that these are not in larger interest to make public make public means known to the enemy as to what the specified weapon details on each one of the defense equipments is and suddenly when you find that you were pasted with allegations of corruption all over and Mr. Modi has run a clean government for the last four years. 
So let us manufacture a crisis. Let us manufacture an issue. And a manufactured issue is, oh, you please tell me the details of the Rafale deal. Shame, shame. I don't think anybody on this side of the House is seeking any national security that details anybody include your party involving president? missiles, involving weapons. Ashi, that, that, does, that, does that anybody also include your party president? Yes. Who what, manufactured what? this issue falsely at the cost of national security? Shame. Honorable Minister should understand our question. Uh, Honourable Minister, Honourable Minister, the question is, you are accountable to Parliament for the expenses of this government, and we are asking for an overall cost yes, sir, am, and a I'm, unit I'm, cost without are, specifying any details. That is what we have been asking. That is what the party president has been asking. We, were, we are as much accountable to this Parliament. We, we are as much accountable to Parliament as much as the UPA government was. And therefore, there is a set of systems, there is a set of systems which we have followed consistently. <laughs> Okay, we will take the story forward on India Business Hour, but let's uh, get to a story that uh, was broken just a short while ago. India's Competition Commission has slapped a 136 crore rupee penalty on global search engine Google. Now, the competition watchdog has essentially accused the company of search engine bias. Google has been coming under fire from antitrust watchdog across Europe as well. In fact, if you look at the EU authority, authority they have slapped Google with a massive fine of nearly $3 billion just last year in July. So from India, it is just 136 crore rupees comparatively we will try to understand and assess this impact as well over the course of the next few days but uh, from google let's move to twitter the social network site has reported uh, quarterly profits for the first time in the january quarter twitter has reported a profit of 91 million dollars its quarterly revenues have come in at over 730 million dollars the stock is rallying on wall street as we speak and that is perhaps one of the reasons why some of the technology stocks in wall street are seeing an upswing whereas uh, whereas uh, other sectors are not. We will uh, get you more on this as well. But uh, before we slip into a short break, uh, take a moment uh, for an important uh, news break. Let me tell you that the budget day ratings are here and it's yet another stellar show by CNBC TV 18. CNBC TV 18 was the number one English news channel and the number one business news channel on budget day. In fact, during the finance minister's budget day speech, CNBC TV 18 market share was bigger than all English news channels put together, almost 16 times more than that of Times Now and over 10 times that of Republic TV. All through the day, on February 1st, CNBC TV 18's market share was 7.5 times more than Times Now and 4.5 times more than that of Republic TV. We would like to thank you, our viewers, for such a resounding and overwhelming response and for all the support you've shown us through all these years. Well, we will have to take a very short break, but just the way you have been doing, stay tuned. Up next is India ranks 44 out of 50 nations in Global Intellectual Property Index. Overall score increases from 25% to 30%. All the details on this story on the other side. Stay right there. Welcome back. Uh, let's get you some exclusive stories uh, from the corporate, specifically the insolvency space. Sources tell us that two companies have submitted binding bids for Bhushan Power and Steel. Remember, the deadline for submission of bids for Bhushan Power and Steel closed today at 2 p.m. And just to alert our viewers, Bhushan Power and Steel is a separate company from Bhushan Steel, and the bids for Bhushan Steel have already gone through. The lady who broke that story is here with us. Ritu Singh is joining in. Uh, Ritu, which are the two companies that are in the fray, and can you tell us what exactly are the valuations looking like? Well, JSW Steel and Tata Steel clash yet again, and this time for another Bhushan company. This time it's Bhushan Power and Steel, uh, which is the Sanjay Singhal promoted company with a three and a half million ton steel producing capacity and a captive power plant. Now, we understand from sources that today was the deadline to submit binding bids for the company under the insolvency proceedings, and only these two companies, that is Tata Steel and JSW Steel, have submitted binding bids to the IRP. Uh, now, remember, Vedanta, we understand, was one of the 
players that was conducting a due diligence but did not submit a bid uh, as of the deadline at 2 p.m. today. Uh, we also understand uh, that the liquidation value of Bhushan Power is about 12,000 crore rupees and the uh, fair value of the company, which is the replacement value of all of its assets, uh, is about 24,000 crore rupees. So the bankers are hoping that the bids will be marked to this 24,000 crore figure and should be upwards of this. Remember, the debt of the company is about 47,000 crore rupees. So it's fairly, you know, one of the largest assets under the IBC and resolution in this case uh, will be a significant breather for both the banks and the company involved. Okay, fair enough. So we should uh, have some sense uh, soon on who the final buyer could be and who out of these two bidder actually emerges the highest one. Thanks, Ritu, for that. Uh, but let's move on to a special story. United States has handed India a slightly better rank when it comes to protecting intellectual property. But India remains still in the bottom half of the rankings. The Global Innovation Policy Center of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce releases annual ranking on how countries are faring on protecting trademarks and patents. This year, India has been ranked 44 out of 50 nations. Now, this is a marginal improvement from last year when India was ranked 43rd out of 45 nations. But India has been given an overall score of 30. This well below the regional average of 52. But this is, again, better than the average of bottom third nations. The top five nations average of whopping 93 on the index. The United States has been ranked as the best nation in protecting intellectual property. United Kingdom, Sweden, France and Germany complete the top five best performers. The United States has lauded India for taking a few steps to improve intellectual property rights regime. But India is still the worst performing nation among the other BRIC countries. And China is the best performer. And we will discuss this story with the head of that report uh, on India Business Hour. But let's uh, now uh, move on to political story. And this one is about the Ram Janbhumi Babri Masjid title dispute case. The Supreme Court has adjourned the case to the 14th of March as certain documentation and translations are yet to be completed. The Apex Court also made it clear that the case would only be dealt as a land dispute case. The court also asked all the parties uh, involved to submit English transcripts of the documents exhibited by them within the next two weeks. Meanwhile, a new peace proposal has been made to the Muslim Personal Law Board by a close eye of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. The proposal insists that the disputed site be given to the Hindu parties and the land made available by the Nirmohi Akhara be used to build a mosque. In fact, the big global story now that we are tracking Bangladesh's, uh, uh, Bangladesh's former Prime Minister Khaleda Zia has been sentenced to a jail term for five years in a graft case. Zia was convicted, remember, of an embezzling over $2,53,000 in donations meant for an orphanage established in her late husband's memory. Zia, however, has maintained that the charges are politically motivated. Zaka Jacob, who's been tracking the story, is here with the details. Uh, Zaka, uh, what are you picking up from your sources? And tell us uh, how this case exactly has evolved and what does this mean going forward? So the significant development in neighboring Bangladesh where the former pri uh, Prime Minister Khalid Azia has been sent to five years after being convicted in a corruption case. Uh, the case essentially relates to the Zia Rahman Trust. It's a chari charitable trust run in the name of her late husband, the former president of Bangladesh, uh, Zia Rahman. Uh, the accusation against her, her son, as well as three other associates, is that they siphoned off money to the tune of about $250,000 uh, over a period of time. Uh, and this was a case of corruption. This is just one of the many cases of corruption that she faces. But the sense amongst uh, her supporters of the Bangladesh National Party, as well as sympathizers of Khalid Azia and her regime, uh, is that this is simply a politically motivated case because there is a law in Bangladesh which bars any politician who's convicted uh, for, of a prison sentence that exceeds two years is debarred from contesting uh, future elections. And as you know, Bangladesh goes to general elections later this year, so this could potentially debar uh, Khaled Zia from contesting uh, in what would have been an, in an otherwise equal contest between Sheikh Hasina of the Awami League, the current Prime Minister, and uh, Khalid Azia of the BNP. And, and Bangladesh politics for the last, God knows, 30 years has been defined uh, by these two polar opposite women uh, and their respective parties. So in that sense, a, a lot of BNP supporters, I think over the last week, Bangladesh police and military have uh, arrested more than a thousand BNP supporters. So this will have huge implications uh, for the upcoming elections in Bangladesh. Oh, yes, uh, this is something that will impact the elections for sure, Zaka. Thanks for putting that into perspective. But uh, let's move on and take a look at uh, the latest offerings from Auto Expo 2018. The Auto Expo is buzzing with several launches across segments. Today, Maruti unveiled its all-new Swift, starting from 4.99 lakh rupees. So, let's take a look at that new product launch.
quite a few cars have been launched at the 2018 Auto Expo, but the most important one, the Swift. The prices are already out now. It's a little under 5 lakh rupees, the starting price, and a little under 8 lakh rupees for the top end. To rupees 4.99 to rupees 7.96 lakh to be precise. We've already reviewed this car, we've already driven this car. It's available with a 1.2 litre petrol engine or a 1.3 litre diesel. And this time, both the engines can be had with an automated manual transmission or AGS in Suzuki speak. Like I said, I think it's a good looking car. It's an evolution of the proven formula of the Swift design. It maintains that silhouette but adds a lot of details that makes it sportier and makes it look all new. Of course, it is all new under the skin as well. It's based on the new Hardtech platform. It also makes it lighter, also makes it more exciting to drive than the outgoing car. The Swift has always been an exciting car. In fact, it is one of the best affordable hot hatches out there. And the new one is no different. But speaking of hot hatches, I think there is going to be a bigger engine that will be unveiled with the Swift at a later point. We were expecting it to be shown at least at the Auto Expo. It's not been done, so there's no Swift Sport here either. But if you are at the Auto Expo, I would request you to come to the Maruti Suzuki stall as well because there are quite a few Swifts out there which have been done up in various colors, which have been kitted out very nicely, and I think they'll look all good. Well, that's an interesting lunch. And of course, Auto Expo is continuing. So uh, as you heard our reporter point out, if you are at the Auto Expo, then you can go and take a look at these stores. But with that, it's a wrap for this edition of What's Out. Many thanks for watching the show. But don't go anywhere. Up next is a special from the Edelweiss Conference 2018, where we discuss market trends with the best minds in the sector. And of course, India Business Hour will be back with all the top stories of the day in 30 minutes. Don't go anywhere.